Hey everyone, this is Frito Hacker Age Rave, and I'm here with my recap and review of Bleach, the thousand uh, year blood war, which is basically a continuation of the Bleach anime. And of course, as a fan of Bleach, I'm very, very happy. Anime is back, which and is adapting the thousand, thousand year blood war arc, which was the final arc in the Bleach manga. And yeah, I did do my reviews for the Bleach manga over the Geek Yuri, so I'm back doing my reviews for the anime. I'm, I'm just excited. It was a very, very fun first episode. It ended up basically laying the groundwork for uh, the conflict that's to come. And it showed that the people that our heroes will be facing, yeah, they are strong. They are very, very strong. So uh, the episode opens up with this narration about the about the Quin Quinchi King and that the Quinchi King ends up experiencing a pulse after 900 years. And then we cut to the research department at the Soul Society. So it turns out that hollows aren't being necessarily destroyed. They are disappearing. And because uh, the rate of the disappearance of the hollows is very, very high, it is thinning the veil between the land of the living and the land of the dead. And of course, the captain, the, the captain who is in charge of the research department, he knows. He knows that the uh, Quinchis are somehow responsible for this and then we cut to Karakura town and we get to see these two young soul reapers and I think uh, if I remember correctly her name is Shino and this is Ryunsuke or something like that and Shino is apparently Ikaku's uh, sister I'm not really sure I could be wrong here so we get a conversation between the two and it turns out that Ryunsuke is basically a covert. He doesn't necessarily, yeah, he doesn't want to go ahead and fight Hollows. And he's the one who ends up saying that he has heard that there's already this very, very powerful substitute soul reaper in Karakura town. So why aren't we letting him uh, deal with all of this? And yeah, Shino is like, hey, Ryunsuke, I don't have time for your covert covertly personality right now. And we have been stationed here because our powers have been acknowledged. So we need to do this. Okay, so I'll be patrolling the south. You go ahead and patrol the north. And yeah, this is where these two separate. And Rinsuke just want, is just hoping that he doesn't end up uh, facing a hollow. But yeah, he ends up facing a hollow and he runs away. And as he's running from the hollow, he ends up calling Shino and Shino isn't picking up. He runs uh, up the, the staircase and he ends up seeing that, yep, Hollows ended up attacking Shino, and one of the Hollows has Shino in its palm, and yeah, Shino, Shino is in, in a bad state. She is injured, and Ryunsuke is like, hey, I guess I'm the only one here. I have to make a stand here. I have to save Shino. And he ends up taking out a sword. But before he can do anything, the hollow that was already chasing after Shino, it ends up one hitting Shino. And yeah, even Shino is surprised. He's like, okay, so these hollows are very, very powerful. I am down with only one hit. He's laying down in his own pool of blood and he's about to die. And of course, he's like, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. And yep, this is where our heroes arrive. So the, the hollow that's about to kill Shino, he ends up being attacked by Ichigo. And yeah, this hollow is done. Shida ends up uh, shooting an arrow and it destroys the it, it destroys the hollow's hand that's holding Shino. And Sado comes in and he grabs Shino, takes her to safety. And also I forgot, uh, when Shino and Ryunsuke appeared in Karakura town, we got this little, we got this very quick scene where we saw this person who had that Quincy amulet. Uh, in his hand, so I guess that's the same person we'll end up seeing again in uh, as the as the episode progresses. So Orahime uh, comes in and she ends up giving uh, Shino and Ryunsuke some first aid, and she's like, "Hey, I'll be back to heal you guys properly once this is over." And yeah, more hollows appear around the building, and our team is ready. Our team is ready to fight. I was so excited to see all of them together on screen. So yeah, a whole lot of hollows, and I'm like, "Hey." This number of hollows, this is nothing for this group. This is nothing. A little montage uh, introducing every character showcasing their powers. So Orehime is up first. A hollow tries to attack Orehime. And Orehime ends up rejecting that hollow. And yeah, the hollow ends up being pushed back into two or three other hollows. And I was like, you know what? I would have actually preferred to see uh, Inoue use her, what what was his name? Subaki, her one, one hit KO attack. I would have liked to see her basically using Subaki to go through like five or six hollows. 
but it is what it is. So then Chad comes in and Chad ends up one punching a bunch of hollows and then Ishida comes in and he rains his arrows on the hollows, killing a whole lot of them and Ichigo has to dodge one of the arrows because Ichigo's like, hey, be careful Ishida. And then uh, a hollow tries to go and attack uh, Ryunsuke and of course, uh, Ichigo just stops, stops the hollow uh, very easily and yeah, Ichigo's like, hey, I need to end this. And he ends up uh, going into his Bankai form and he uses his attack to basically kill all of the hollows in the vicinity. There's a huge explosion and I have to give it to the animation department because this animation in this anime, it didn't look like your normal anime uh, TV show series anime animation. It felt like uh, the type of animation you would see in anime films. So very high quality animation. So the fight is done. We are in Ichigo's room and it turns out that Ryunsuke ended up sleeping for like, what, two days? And Orehime comes in with a lot of bread. Ishida comes in, Chad comes in. And of course, Ryunsuke is taking everything in. He is trying to make sense of what's happening. And this is where he realizes that, hey, you are the one who ended up saving me. And Ichigo is like, well, it took you long enough to realize that. And because Ichigo wants Ryunsuke to eat some bread, he tells Ryunsuke to get into his Giga and even that surprises Ryunsuke and Ichigo is like, so yeah, you have, you basically scream at everything, huh? And of course he asks about Shino and Shino is like, hey, Shino comes and uh, she ends, and she ended up bringing uh, the Cokes uh, and yeah, she looks at uh, Ryunsuke and... <laughs> basically attacks him. So while the group is eating bread, this is where Eburn comes in, this strange mysterious character, who I think was the same character we saw during the beginning of the episode. And he, yeah, he tries to intimidate everyone and Ichigo is like, hey, who the heck are you? And also get off my bed. And Eburn is like, what did you say to me? Ichigo is like, I'm saying that who the heck are you? And get off my bed. And before Eburn can say anything, Ichigo goes in and he kicks Eburn right in the face. And I really liked seeing Orihime <laughs> opening the window for Ichigo. <laughs> that was a funny scene. So Ichigo is like, hey, I'm not really sure if that's supposed to be a Iran car or something, but you know what? I'll go and handle this on my own. And he goes after Eburn and Eburn is like, wow, he really just kicked me. And Ichigo comes in and he asks Eburn a, quest a few questions. He's like, okay, so are you an Iran car or something? And that basically angers Eburn. Eburn is like, no, I'm not an Iran car. And he ends up showing that Quinchi amulet. And Ichigo is like, oh no, he's a Quinchi. And he, and yeah, Eburn ends up summoning his weapon. And then we got to the Soul Society. We get to see Yumachika and we got, and we get to see Ikaku. And they're basically trying to make sense of what happened to the society. Everyone has disappeared. It makes no sense. And then these two end up being taken to this bunch of footsteps. And the footsteps are either made from a person's sandals or they are made from a person being barefoot. And yeah, they're like, okay, so this wasn't a work of hollows, okay? Because these are basically human-shaped feet. So yeah, these two have a mystery to solve. And then we got to, yeah, these are the footprints. And then we got to the research department and appear Currently, I guess I could be wrong, but I think that this is basically telling us that a whole lot of communities, the people in, the, in those communities have just disappeared. And yeah, then we get to see Yamamoto being intimidated by this group of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people who introduced themselves as the Wandenreich. And they're like, uh, we are actually surprised that it was very easy to infiltrate your office. And Yamamoto, uh, is your security lacking? And Yamamoto is like, no, it's not that the security is lacking. It's that, that I'm here. I am the only security security that this place needs. <laughs> and then we get to see Sasakibe getting attacked and the Wandenreich is like, well, a round of applause for Sasakibe because he single-handedly showed you what uh, what we're going to do to the rest of the Soul Reaper uh, society in like, what, five days? And of course, Yamamoto is like, who the heck are you guys? Why are you here? Why are you doing this? And the Wandenreich are like, Yep, we know that you have a lot of questions, but you should be able to already answer them yourself. You should know who we are. And this is where Yamamoto's like, hey, I don't have time for games. And he ends up attacking the Wandenreich, but they have already teleported away. And then while that's happening, we cut back to Ichigo versus Eborn. And Eborn is basically taunting Ichigo. He's like, why are you dodging my attacks? Why aren't you attacking me? Why aren't you taking out your Bankai? And yeah, Ichigo, because he's a very experienced fighter, Ichigo is like, okay, so this person continues to taunt me. Hmm, I wonder why. But then he's like, okay, so I guess because I need answers from him, I think I have to play his game. And yeah, this is where Ichigo is like, okay, I'm going to unleash my Bankai form. 
And while that's happening, we cut back to Sasaki Bay and he's like, uh, Yamamoto, I need to tell you something. So basically, it turns out that these Wandering Reich are able to basically end a Soul Reaper's uh, Bankai. But of course, Ichigo doesn't know that. So when he unleashes his Bankai, Eburn is very excited. He takes out this amulet and, he, and yeah, Ichigo's like, what the heck did he take out? And we get to see the scene where Eburn is chanting something in German. It basically goes something like... Uh, before the ocean, there's clouds. Before the clouds, there's rain. Before the rain, there's fog. Something that, that something to that effect. And yeah, the amulet that he took out, it ends up affecting Ichigo's bankai. And we get to see uh, some of Ichigo's armor chip away. But no, it turns out that Ichigo's bankai, I guess, is way too powerful for that amulet. And it does nothing. It does nothing to Ichigo. And uh, this is where Ichigo's like, okay, Eburn, what the heck were you trying to do to my Bankai? And Eburn is very confused because he's like, why is why does he still have his Bankai? But before Ichigo could get him to answer, uh, to give him his answers, this is where that shadowy thing that teleported the Wandering Reich from the Soul Society, it appears again. And Ichigo, of course, backs off. And Eburn is like, hey, uh, well, I guess I'll see you guys again. And Eburn ends up being teleported away. And we get and we cut to the Wandering Reich headquarters, and Eburn is uh, already there. He is kneeling, and we get to see this other person walk in, and he's like, "Oh, Eburn, I'm so happy that you're kneeling for me." And Eburn is like, "I would never kneel for you," and you know that. And while those two are arguing, we get to see the person that walked in. His shoulder just gets sliced off, and he falls to the ground. And this is where we get to see. Uh, this mysterious figure sitting on a throne and he's like, how many times do I have to tell you that I hate conflict? Never have arguments in front of me. And I'm like, okay, okay, so he's that kind of person. So he's like, well, I'm all about peace. And he asks Eburn and his Wandering Reich uh, that are still standing to give him the report so that he can figure out how he can proceed with bringing peace to the world. And yeah, this, he, he, does comes across, he does come across as a very, very sinister figure. And for those of you who have read the manga, you know what's going to happen next. But I'm, going, I'm not going to try and spoil it for those of you who don't read the manga. But yeah. Again, as I said, this was a very, very fun uh, episode. A very fun episode gives us uh, the conflict that's about to happen. It, introdu it reintroduces us to characters. It introduces us to new characters. And yeah, I'm excited to see where this is going to go next. And if I end up doing a return review with this for the Geek Kiri, the link to my review, review will be down in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of the episode. And yeah, until next time, stay happy, stay safe, stay blessed. See you guys later. Bye.